Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today we're doing a little bit of stick welding. First with 7018 1 8 and then we're going to do some 7014 5 32nd. And let me give you a little background as to why. I was putting together six of these large steel fixtures, and I got to thinking, you know, I had to swap off. First, I started using pulse spray process with a 9010 gas, then I got running kind of low on that, and um, it worked really well. Pulse spray is a version of spray transfer and it's it's good and hot it's much hotter than short circuit and but much more manageable than, than straight up spray but on the ends here these are nothing but counterweights and so I figured to save a little 9010 I would swap over to CO2 gas and weld those up because there's quite a bit of welding on them so I did that on one but then I got to thinking I mean the CO2 worked worked just fine but it, it reminded me of a, of a time when I was welding a whole bunch of these like about 20 of these remote sewer crawler tractors and the side plates that go on these were much the same. There weren't, they aren't just balance weights. They actually serve a purpose having little guide rollers on them and everything. But one time I ran out of, of MIG wire uh, when we were doing a batch of these and uh, didn't even have a stick welder at the shop that we were working on. And so we were scratching our heads on how to finish up the last few of them. And if I had a stick welder, I could have welded these side plates on there with, with no problem. So... It's always good to have a stick welder in a shop because you never know. Your MIG machine might tear up, you might run out of gas, you might run out of wire, poor planning and all that good stuff, but you know things do happen. So in order to get, get a part out, you, know, you, you can always rely on a good old stick welder if you've got a, a, a box of 7018s or 7014s or something like that that you can make look decent. So this Lincoln Power MIG 350 MP that I'm using will stick weld as well as MIG. It will also TIG weld. So I'm going to swap it over to program or mode number one here from the CO2 welding that I've been doing, which is program 10. I'll swap it over to program one, and we'll hook up the, the uh, stinger and all that good stuff. I'm going to set the amperage kind of good and hot, about a little over 130 amps. Nice small stinger clamp and I'm going to make sure and hook up to the electrode positive and I'm going to be using Excalibur 1-8-7018 rods. So you can see the little T-joint that I've got laying there. I, I, burn a, I ran a bead uh, on, on a little piece of scrap there to make sure the amperage was going to work okay and it seemed to be pretty close so we're going to fire up here. This is a 1-8, again 1-8-7018 rod and I like to set them up kind of hot and also like to keep a really close arc. So sometimes I'll actually set the dig function, even though for 7018 it's recommended to have a low dig, a dig setting to run a smoother arc. Sometimes I like to ramp up the dig function to a little higher so that I can just kind of almost drag the rod right in the joint. I can actually feel the flux of the rod dragging along. It might make for another BB or two, but it just kind of is a... I just like it. Sometimes I like to experiment with things like dig functions and everything. So what I'm doing here is I'm going the opposite direction. Rather than make a tie-in and have a possibility look kind of you know lumpy in the middle, I'm just starting on the other side and welding to where I left off. And I should have tapped the slag off of that crater, but I didn't. So you can see that it kind of uh, get a little squirrely and, and flare up here when it gets over top of that slag, but it worked out okay. So here's a little tip. If you're doing coated work using stick rod, you have to get all the slag off, like every bit of the slag off around the toes and everything, because slag could be masking another defect like undercut or something. So one way of doing that for code work especially, it may not be worth it for other things, is a, a, an air scribe, also called a vibropine, or in this case it's called an engraving pen. It's just a little air-operated uh, scribe, and it'll, it'll get that little carbide metal, carbide steel tip, you know, down into some really tight places and vibrate slag out a lot better than a chip and hammer will in certain cases. Now, chip and hammer would work fine here. There's no real tight spots to get it in, but this works. It works good. You can drag that that hardened tip along the toes of the weld, and it will really do a good job of getting the slag out of all little any possible little nooks and crannies or anything like that. And then you run a brush over it, power brush or hand brush, and it usually will will uh, will get it ready for inspection or paint or whatever you're getting it ready for. That's that 7018 1 8 bead there, pretty much ready for whatever now. And here are some shots of the end pieces. Now on these end pieces, oh, you might have noticed there, I always, usually anyway, light up ahead of where I'm going to weld and then weld over the, uh, the arc strikes there. Occasionally if I'm starting on a corner of something, I can just flick it over the corner and start right where I want to start, but uh, usually start ahead and then drag back and then weld over all, that, uh, all the tracks. 
So on this particular joint, I'm welding the end of the three of the three quarter inch thick plate, but now I have to come back with a second pass to tie that cap piece on the, the cover plate. So I figured I'd just weld the three quarter on first, and then come back, stack a second one in there, and go the opposite direction just for kicks. So again, fairly close arc, no real weave motion or oscillation, just a nice smooth drag. And then when I'm done, I'm going to use the air scribe again, get all the slag off and hit it with a power brush, and it will be ready, kind of ready for paint. Now an air scribe for the average job done in someone's garage or shop is, is kind of overkill for cleaning up slag, but for coated work, it, it's the ticket. Now, a, a few weeks ago, I did a little bumper build. I built a bumper kit built by uh, Swag Off-Road, and I used nothing but 7014s and a buzz box for the whole thing, and then shined them up with a wire wheel, and it came out not too, not too shabby, not half bad. So it got me to thinking, well, what if I was welding this, these end plates on here, and all I had in the shop as far as a stick welder was the buzz box. So I got some 532nd 7014s because that way I can make the whole run without without making any tie-ins from end to end. It'll weld about 10 or 12 inches easily without uh, without stopping. So that's what I'm doing. I set this the buzz box on 200 amps and same technique just a nice tight arc. You can run a really tight arc with a 7014 because of the way that the uh, the constituents of the flux coating it kind of creates a little cone up in there and you can just kind of drag the the outer slag on the metal and, and it, it, it's just a drag rod and this flux usually comes off pretty easy in fact a lot of times it will just peel right off I didn't do it well enough here apparently that where it's going to peel right off but um, um, it comes off easily enough anyway so here's the end piece I'm going to go ahead and uh, since I did get a shot of that we'll go ahead and do that as well again you can you can look at the at the uh, the arc length there it's it's fairly tight not like rammed forcefully into the puddle that would be a little overkill but just you know just kind of dragging along there where you can kind of feel the the rods scrub on the base metal as you go and that's what works for me most of the time and in this case I'm I put the air scribe up so I'm just gonna rake the excess the what will come off really easily with a with the slag hammer which I like to keep nice and sharp nice sharp corners on it, and then I'll run over it with a power brush and make sure to wear safety glasses and face shield if you're ever using a power brush I have pulled wires out of my nose out of my private parts I've had to go to the eye doctor and get them plucked out of my eye before so it's dangerous you need a face shield if you're using a power brush but 7014 cleans up really nice alright that is it for today so what's the takeaway here well, when you work in a job shop like I do, you tend to almost forget about stick welding because most everything is MIG and TIG because it's cleaner and more efficient. But when you run out of wire or start to run out of gas and the job needs to be delivered, that stick function can really come in handy, even if it's just a buzz box you have stored in the corner.